You know, some of the most popular plants we sell in spring are actually tropical plants. Some flowering, some not. Like, for instance, hibiscus, right, is a big is a big one. Mandevilla, also uh, Boston ferns. Now, it's now going to get cold, and that there most of the time it's outside. And now we're not talking tomorrow because you need to do some things. If say you want to save your Boston ferns, or you want to bring in one of your um, hibiscus, or you want to transition some of those other plants like crotons into your house. There's some things that you need to start thinking about right now. First of all, which one we give you permission to euthanize those tropicals because they're plants, not puppies. That's right. It's okay. It's okay. Don't feel bad. Um, and uh, it's something that, that they're cheap enough I guess we should say. I guess we have some people who don't think they're cheap enough, but <laughs> but, but they are a fairly good bargain compared to the size and what you get out of them all summer long. That they're they're you know creating that nice tropical Polynesian fantasy Obvious. garden, you know. But if you want to bring them back in, you need to start cleaning them up. You need to get rid of any of the insects that maybe on those plants because you don't want to all of a sudden bring them inside and then guess what all of a sudden everywhere you've got aphids growing you know there's aphids all over the place crawling all over you don't want to they you know creepy crawlies you know (laughs) that have come out so you've got to start that now last week we were talking about this same process with some of uh, how to control insects that it starts with adults then it goes to nymphs, which is the immature, young, uh, creepy crawly. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then and then it goes to the they become adults, lay eggs. So you've got eggs, nymphs, adults. Um, it's a cycle, you know. They want to be oh. prolific too. You know? <laughs> so, um, the birds, the whole birds and the bees Jeez. thing. Yeah. Now, you need to control all stages. And you need to start spraying your plants and elim- eliminate all those insects. Now, we talked on how much we like triple action. Uh, it, and it should be in your closet where you keep any of your pesticides for outdoor plants and for indoor plants. Because it is an excellent organic indoor plant control for both insects, but also it'll control some diseases. I... I'm like on the fence as far as saying disease control because it's not the best or other bet there are better options, but it has disease resistant properties. How about we put it that way? So you're getting it's insecticide that has a bonus of, of a pretty good disease control. And where are those you can start spraying, but it is organic. It has per, a, per, a, the original thrin in it, the permethrin. Um, and that where it just doesn't have a long residual. Uh, so you're going to have to spray it a lot. It's not like you just one and done. And it's not what we call systemic. It is not, there's no systemic action whatsoever. Now, Bug Blaster Plus, I like. Okay. Bug Blaster Plus, that it has a, another thrin in it, uh, it, but this one is not organic. This is created by scientists that work on the same properties of the killing action of the permethrin, but it makes it so that it has a longer residual. I, I love this product. Uh, again, it's called uh, Bug Blaster Plus. Now, if you start spraying, you don't just go ahead, spritz it a little bit. You need to spray uh, with an insecticide on top of the leaves and under the leaves and the stems because there's an insect that's con- called scale. Um, Julio, have you ever seen a boat with barnacles on it? Mm-hmm. Scale is like a barnacle where it has legs when they're immature. But when it becomes an adult, it just suckers on to the spot and onto the stems of the plant and just stays there. 
you need to control that a different way. Uh, you need to, to, again, the Bug Blaster Plus will work, but even something as simple, and it's a simple action. The reason why I call this simple is because all seasoned horticultural oil, it needs to be done when temperatures below 85 degrees and it smothers the, the insect because it coats it with a fine uh, oil and it and it's also organic, believe it or not. And it kills in a different way. It doesn't poison it. It has a mechanical smothering effect and kills it that way. So um, it may sound awful, but guess what? It's you with a house full of insects running around or you cleaning them up the way that you need to before you bring them in. Now, I would alternate uh, these sprays and that way that you get good coverage. And I would do it every other week. I would even encourage you could do certainly the per, permethrin uh, one week and then do the bug blaster plus the following week. And then before you bring it in, you, you do the all seasons oil. You could do it one each week. And if you're changing it up, you're controlling generations. It's not that you're just, you know, it's not you're controlling the insects that happen to be on it. Now you're controlling the insects that will develop on it later because the eggs hatch. That's what you're trying to do. Um, but you got to make sure you're doing the top of the, of the uh, leaf and under the leaf and as the stems. Because I know that they, that we've had uh, where if you've ever, see, I don't think many of our listeners have done this, but like if you grab the trunk of a tree and you, you feel squish, <laughs> you found yourself a scale. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not very fun. Yeah, not. <laughs> but the whole thing is you need to get rid of all of them because you want to have nice, healthy uh, plants coming in and you don't want to have insects that are now going to your healthy house plants. So just make sure that you start getting that done and, and get it. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you bring them in, they're going to turn ugly. <laughs> they are used to a higher light condition and that the fall there's less light every day um, it, it's interesting if you look at a uh, sun calendar or daylight calendar that it's less and less you know so we're going less and less until December 22nd uh, to where it's the you know the shortest day of the year and that because of that lower sunlight and your leaves are going to start dropping and that it's got to acclimate and become comfortable into its new environment. It's also, you know, you've got the humidity issues where whether it's air conditioning or or your heat, you're going to have a lower uh, humidity environment than they had out stores, but they will acclimate and they will acclimate to your new environment. uh, And that you just have to be patient you know, have a have a broom and dustpan close by because <laughs> you know, you'll be picking up some leaves. Um, but again, they'll, they'll get there, and it also depends on the type of plant. Uh, if it if it needs lower light to begin with, it should it should do fine. But it's those flowering plants like mandevilla and uh, tropical hibiscus. They you may have a, a hard transition with them. So don't uh, don't try to save them all. You know, why only because they're plants, not puppies. There we go. So if you've got questions about anything to do with acclimating your houseplants from outdoors to in, please call the hotline. That hotline number is 609-685-1880. There you go.